Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at what filters are and how you can use those in your ASP.NET Core applications. So, filters in ASP.NET Core allow us to run certain code before or after a specific stage in the request processing pipeline. Uh, okay, so what are the main usages of those filters and what's that request processing pipeline thingy that I'm talking about. So let's start with the request processing pipeline. I have prepared here a small simplified look at what it might look like in your application. Basically every request that hits our application will go through multiple components that are built in a Russian doll-like structure. The first middleware component will be hit then the next one, then the next one, up until a certain number, you can create your own custom middlewares, and by the end you'll hit the routing mechanism. The routing middleware or the routing mechanism will then pass the request over to the action invocation pipeline, which is built out of filters, by the end of which we can execute our action, and the response from our action will be sent over through all these filters back to the middleware and back to the client that took care of the HTTP request. Now that we have explained what the request pipeline is, what are the usages of filters, what are the usages of middleware, and why are those divided? Because apparently they are doing somewhat a similar job. Generally speaking, middleware and filters have a similar behavior and look, both do something before sending the request to the next component line, and yeah, both can short circuit the whole request itself if some criteria is not met. Both can cover common tasks like exception handling, logging, localization, authorization, and authentication, etc. The first striking difference is basically in the way the processing pipeline is built. So we have first middleware, then we have the filters. Middleware components are more or less low-level components. The filters, on the other hand, have access to the MVC context that is built. What I mean by that, inside filters, if for example you need to create a validation filter, you have access to the model state. Basically you can check if the model state is valid or not. Inside the middleware, that is achieved way harder. Basically, middleware is used for more like general things, like exception handling, logging, checking on some request header. For example, we have a tenant ID inside the request header that is required. And basically, you can short circuit if that request header is missing. But as I said, it does not contain access to the MVC context, on the other hand, and the specifics of that context. And the thin line between the middleware and the filters is basically in the scope. So if you have some general things, I would be inclined into using middleware. If you need some fine grain control, for example, you need that specific endpoints will return specific format of data or something like that. In those cases, you will need to have the filters, since filters can be applied to specific subsets of actions, to specific controllers, etc., etc. Well, middleware is applied globally. From my experience, I could say that you should focus your filters to work on cross-cutting concerns like logging, validation, caching, authorization, and authentication, on the other hand, should be handled inside the middleware. And you can read more about that in the links that I'll provide down below. At this point, I want you to remember two things. First is the filter pipeline is run after the middleware pipeline, and that the filters have access to the MC context, while middleware does not. Okay, so filters. Let's see the sample project that I have over here. It's the basic sample project that we have in ASP.NET Core with a weather forecast controller over here and the weather forecast mode. Let's talk about what kind of filters we have. First, we have authorization filters. I'll scroll 
here a little bit. Basically, the most common filter that you might have interacted with is the authorize. Uh, over here, we can send specific parameters to work with. Authorize filter is mostly commonly seen in the MVC tutorials and all that stuff for beginners. So you might have used that in the past. Basically, we can specify a specific role. For example, I want only the user to be able to retrieve the weather forecast, or I want only the administrator to be able to retrieve the forecast. Authorization filters are run first in the filters pipeline. So basically, even if you create an action filter and you try to define it way above the authorized filter, if you have a custom one, let's say, anyway, the authorized filter will run first. That's the way things are done. This kind of filter does not have an after method because why would you need one? Authorized filters should be run before the request is sent to the next filter. Generally, you'd not implement one of these on your own because it brings a whole lot of complexity that needs to be tackled. I've had that in the past and from my experience I can say that it's gruesome at some point. Okay, so resource filters. Those filters are run after the authorization filters and support uh, before and after methods. Basically, here I have a sample resource filter that has on resource executing, which is before, and on resource executed, which is after. So this method is run before the request is sent to the next component, this after the response is received from the next component. Basically, over here we have a filter that can be a value from the HTTP request header. So if this value is not, a call is done to the next filter. You don't need to do anything over here. If not, we can return a 400 response with an invalid request and attribute it to a JSON. Basically, resource filters are kind of useful when we are dealing with cache because you can short circuit the request early on and this will speed up your application. Next are the action filters. Over here I have another example of an action filter. So it's sample action filter. The idea is somewhat similar. Basically we have an action filter interface that implements two methods. For example, over here, we are writing the model state validity. Action filters are run after the model binding phase. That means that if the input resource is found but can't be converted to the targeted type, the model state is flagged as invalid. And if an API controller attribute is used over the controller itself, an automatic HTTP status 400 error will be returned. So that's the small disclaimer over with this sample action filter. You'd want to use action filters kind of more often than the others. For example, you, have, you might have validation filters at this point because the model is already binded and you can assert whether the model is valid or not and break the execution if not and return a meaningful response to the end user. Next ones are exception filters. Basically, these filters are the most controversial on the, of the bunch, but yeah, the usage is straightforward. You are going to use an exception filter if you want to filter all the exceptions that are thrown from the controller method, except the HTTP response exception. That's a rule exception. You can read about that more in the links down below. Exception filters will support only one method on exception, so it's no after or before methods over there. You could use exception filters, but from my experience, I'd say that exception handling middleware is the way to go. But if you need some exception handling that is specific to a specific endpoint, then exception handling filters are a solution to your problem. But if generally that's not required and you have some middleware component that does the exception handling, that's the way to go. And yeah, that's the opinion of the documentation as well.
Okay, the next ones are result filters. I've personally not used those very often. Let me scroll in a little bit over here. Basically, what are these filters? They run immediately after and before the result execution and only when the method was executed successfully. Usually you'd use them to add some logic like a formatter or something like that to the final response. For example, in, in an API you could perform some serialization or stuff like that. But I would you find some other ways around that. But okay, that's just me. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to show you is basically a parameterized filter inside the authorization example that we had previously we could specify certain parameters that we want to send to the filter that's easily done in a format like this basically we over here we add a value to the response header to the and that's basically we have the parameter name and parameter value and you could use it like this so basically I will copy it over here to the controller over here response header attribute sorry about that I'm going to import the references so I have the name test and then I have the value test to and basically that's how you would send parameters to your filters. Once again, I'll show you over here, basically a constructor with two parameters over here. Nothing too fancy. So now let's see how we can create our filters pipeline. Our custom filters pipeline is by going to the program.cs or startup.cs depending on your version. So basically over here, when we add controllers, we can start adding the filters in a fashion like this. So we add sample action, resource, exception filter, and result filter. Worth mentioning, the order does matter, like it matters when we add our middleware. However, the order based on the type of filter cannot be changed. So even if I take this filter from over here and paste it on top, the order of the execution will not change because we are ordering only on the type right now. If we had three or more result filters, the order of how we set up those filters in our program.cs or startup.cs will matter. Okay, I'll just finish up by reiterating over the difference between the filter and the middleware. So, the question you should ask yourself when you want to decide whether to use the filter or the middleware is basically, do I need to be aware of MVC artifacts such as routing, controller name, metadata of the action? If so, you need to use filters. Or if you are instead interested in the flow of the execution. Those kind of things can be done in the MVC middleware pipeline and can be done before the MVC 